All right, welcome to video number three on this what the heck serverless hack video series. In the previous video, we covered challenge number one, which was all about the setup. Now I'm at the what the heck serverless hack website and I'm ready to go to the next challenge, which would be challenge two, create a hello world function. So for prereqs, it looks like we've got challenge one setup, which we did successfully. And it says here, Azure Functions are an integral part of a serverless architecture. Azure Functions allow you to run small pieces of code called functions without worrying about application infrastructure. With Azure Functions, the cloud infrastructure provides all up-to-date servers. You need to keep your application running at scale. Awesome. So the challenge here is in this exercise, you will create your first Hello World Azure function in Visual Studio Code. And the success criteria is you are able to open your function in a browser and pass your name in a query string. You should see a message like, hello, your name, this HTTP triggered function executed successfully. Alrighty. So they want us to do this locally. So what I'm going to do is open up my Windows terminal. Make sure I drag that to the right screen here. And then I'm just going to make a new folder called W2H what the heck local function. And I'm going to move into that. And then I'm going to do code dot. That way it opens Visual Studio Code in here. I'm going to hit trust. And then as long as you have the Azure extensions installed, you should be able to click the Azure extension on the left side and then on the local area, you click on the plus and you hit create function. And it's telling us that the cyclic folder is not a function project. We need to create a new project. We'll hit yes. I'm going to use C sharp. I'm going to select .NET 6 isolated LCS. We're going to click that there. And it asks us to create an HTTP function. So we're going to select the HTTP trigger. And I'm going to keep everything as the default options here. The namespace default is fun, fine. Access rate function is fine. And these are things that we might need to change later on. Not 100% sure, but for now, the defaults are completely fine. So the success criteria says that we're able to essentially run a function locally. So on the left side here, I'm going to go hit run and debug. And then I'm going to hit that little play button, which you can also uh, trigger by hitting F5. But I'm going to just click the button itself. The output of the console after running this should give us the URL of the function. And that will give us the URL that we can visit to get the function to execute. Remember that Azure functions are event driven, driven code, right? So we've got that here. Now I can visit this in a browser or I can copy the link and use, if you have some sort of REST API extension in Visual Studio Code, uh, I like to use this one called Thunder Client. I'll hit new request here, and then I will paste this in here. And also, let me scroll, give me some space here. There we go. Uh, let's move this up here, and then I'll just hit send. And we see here that, oops, our output is down here. Welcome to Azure Functions. So locally, it works fine. I can also copy this and open up a new browser tab. Paste that in here. And we see, welcome to Azure Functions. So it says that we also should be able to return a name. Uh, we might need to edit some code for that because I believe the template for .NET 6 isolated might not return a name. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's not asking for a name here, but let's see if we can edit some code. Oops, didn't want to do that. We'll do that. Do that there. Give us some more space. And then we'll just say that the route, we'll edit the route here. So we'll say, actually, you know what? We'll do this. We'll say string name. And then in here, we'll just say, right, welcome to Azure Functions. And then we can go ahead and provide our name here. Name. And that should be able to print out our name value from here as well. I can't remember if I need to have a dollar sign up front. Yes, I do to format that string correctly. All right, so now we'll do F5 to run locally once more. There we go. And we'll see what happens now. So with putting in a string name here and the HTTP declaration me means that we can expect JSON body with a call 
with the value name. So head over to the Thunder client again. And then in here, we'll see that we have the same URL that it gave us in the output. Where did it go? Here we go. It's the same URL, but now I can provide a body and I'll say name, name, whoops, can't type today. And then I'll say Gwen. And then we'll close that off. And then I hit send and it says, welcome to Azure Functions, Gwen. Awesome. So let's close this and then we'll go back to our challenge. And it's telling us here, you are able to open your function in a browser and pass your name in a query string. We did that with a body and I did it in Thunder Client, but you could also provide that in here. Uh, let me show you. So if I run, I'll have to run this again. And I will do F5 and we'll give that a second. We'll scroll down and once it's running, we can do name equals Gwen. And we'll see here, welcome to Azure Functions, Gwen. And you can see I've passed it in here. So we have met the success criteria here and we are ready to move on to the next challenge, which is all about creating resources. So I will see you in the next video.